Zagreb, thank you so much. We are so fucking happy to be here. Thank you for coming. We've been wanting to come here for so many years and we're so, we're, we've been here for two days already. You have a beautiful city. We love it here. All right. Let's fucking do this. One, two, three, four. This has been an amazing year for you so far with the Grammys and Brits and the uh, movie with Spike Jones and how, how, how to top that? What's, what's next? Well, how are you going to top it, Jer? Uh, I mean, to be honest, all that stuff is great and then like we kind of have a really dynamic life where when we go home, the, it's like really exciting to just work on the garden and see our loved ones. <laughs> like, it's kind of... We kind of enjoy both worlds a little bit, so. But the the band stuff has been really crazy recently, which is great. But this whole summer is beautiful. Like we have, we're playing lots of cities we've never been to before. For us, we, that's great because we've done a lot of touring. And as a band, we've never. Tim and I have been here, but we never come here as a band. And and uh, we've never been to Poland. We've never been to Serbia. We've never been like. So we're gonna. You've been traveling here or playing with with some other bands. You played here. I he, played here like 10 years ago with another band and Tim and I came to travel. I've actually, this is my first time to Zagreb. I've been to like Dubrovnik and Split. But. So you know a bit about Croatia and... A little bit, yeah. yeah. I love it here, yeah. Last time I was here, I, I had a really nice time just hanging around and seeing things. But. Uh, let's get back to, to Grammys. I, I've seen the the, uh, the award ceremony and I haven't seen a band so thrilled with with an award for, I don't know, years. It seemed like you were really surprised and very, very thrilled with it. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was exciting. It was like it was really, a total shock. It was, it was, yeah, it wasn't. I was. I think we were all pretty shocked. You could see on our faces, but it was. Uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I mean, it was a very surreal moment. Like, it was. Uh, yeah, I mean, I yeah. It's still. I mean, it's like it's funny to say that we won a Grammy. It's like, or won that Grammy particularly. It's like, oh, weird. Like, yeah, yeah. It doesn't quite. Something's weird about it, but it was yeah, it was amazing. It was fun. Yeah, I've seen the the performance after the the, the award ceremony, and uh, Win had a smile on his face yeah. throughout the song. That's yeah, that's not. Yeah. It was kind yeah. of amazing. It's like yeah, you could just tell it was the strangest song we've ever played live because we're just like what? Yeah, we were all like. Hey. <laughs> yeah, really crazy. Yeah. Yeah, pretty pretty nuts. But it was all the the best part of it was right after that song where we all played smiling and the credits roll in the TV show, and then we all went backstage just totally excited, completely crazy, and we were locked out of our dressing room, <laughs> so we were just stuck in the hallway for 20 minutes. It was just like. So I remember I was answering all the text messages that we got. Yeah, like, like people were like, congratulations, oh my god. And I was writing them back right away. Like, oh thanks. And they're like, what are you doing on the phone? Like <laughs> it was pretty awesome. It was great. It really like brought it back down to earth. Like, oh we're still locked out. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. It seems America was even more shocked than, than you you were by, by the award because of all the, the the who is arcade fire guy and the tweets that thousands of tweets that were like stunned with with the with the grammy yeah i i, I think that maybe maybe that's that's even more stunning because you you won a, a album of the year grammy for for uh, some say dying art so it's kind of a victory for all of us who still believe in in an album like uh, like an art form yeah i mean i mean for us like albums are uh, yeah i mean we've, we've always kind of all the record yeah i mean like whenever we start recording or anything we're never thinking about let's put out a single i mean it might happen someday but generally it's like when you when we write songs like usually they kind of belong together and we we definitely think in that in that way about albums 
So albums will live definitely, huh? I mean Yeah, like those awards just felt especially great because of that exactly. Like it's like the, uh, the highest honor for an album which we we care about and you never know and that's why we make records is mo for us first. And it's like you never really know if people care about albums, but but it just it felt good because it's just like oh somebody likes like enjoyed it as an album, you know what I mean? Because who knows if that'll exist down the line? But but I definitely yeah, it was just like it's just really nice to the 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 good things that have happened this year have all and like all the new people that maybe are hearing about the band right now are hearing about it because of the album and not for paparazzi <laughs> reasons you know what I mean like it's just kind of a genuine way to be introduced to the band I think which mm -hmm. is great which is pretty lucky uh, uh, some of the guys from the band said uh, after the Grammys that uh, you are a little weird band that it's a great honor for little weird bands how, how can you keep things little and weird with so, mu so much success now I think it's more of our frame of our state of mind than uh the reality of our situation. <laughs> I mean, we're obviously like, you know, we're in an amazing position. We're like playing big festivals and touring and we have a lot of resources and everything. But I mean, I just, I think we're like, I guess it feels small in a way. I mean, we just, I mean, cause we're not like, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of that, a lot of the culture, you know, around like pop culture and stuff, it's all about, you know, getting big and getting successful and, you know, at the top of the world, at the top of your game, you know, like, And I don't think we ever really, I mean, we're, we're just kind of trying to make music that we really like and we always have, and sort of all that other stuff seems sort of like a, it gets, we get in the way, you know, it's distracting. So I think, I think that's the, where the little, the little thing comes in. So. Your, your concerts seem very uplifting, very healing almost, like a ritual and, and very happy for you for, for, and for the audience also. But uh, how does it relate to your uh, recording process? Is, it, is, is recording an album the same or, or very different for you? It depends on the day. <laughs> I'd say, yeah. I'd say in general it's actually pretty different. Like we sort of, we're not great. We haven't tried really multitasking, so when we're working on an album, we're really just doing that. And when we're touring, we're really not writing or recording at all. We don't really do both at the same time. So I guess it is pretty different styles of energy. We definitely give 100% recording as well, but it's a different 100%. Like, the live show is clearly just like aggression, but the recording is maybe a little more internal or something but yeah and a lot more intellectual as well yeah, yeah. heady heady yeah. Heady. <laughs> yeah do you argue a lot during recording yeah yeah a healthy amount i think i can't remember who said it but we, like if you i feel like if we're not if there's not something worth arguing about then we probably haven't pushed it hard enough yeah you know what i mean like if there's no arguments it just happens really easily then probably that we're not caring enough about it because you only argue about something if you really feel passionately about it so yeah I mean it is it sucks to get into arguments but it's you know we know each other well enough that it has that when we argue it has to do with the creative element and not personally like personally we all are fine but but uh, I think it's good to get into it sometimes while you're recording you know it means that you you're fighting for something <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and just with that many, I mean, there's there's a bunch of us too, and everyone sort of, you know, often has their own take on things, and I mean, it's just part of communicating, you know, like, you need to, if everyone was just like, yeah, that's a good idea, if we all were just were like that, it would probably be really boring, and we probably wouldn't get very far. We never argue, the two of us, never. It's true, we yeah. just, we bicker, but we don't argue. Yeah, the It's important for the for the rhythm section to, to be tight. Yeah, about? We get along, man, we get along. <laughs> We communicate just like we play together. Yeah, we don't even have yeah. to talk. We don't even talk usually. <laughs> this is rare. This is really rare. We usually we don't even look at each other. <laughs> this, is yeah. the, this is the first time you see each other. Yeah. This is yeah. a big moment. I didn't even yeah. know Tim had a beard, actually. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's good. Thank you. Thank you. 
Oh, uh, when, when Funeral came out and all that success uh, came around, uh, it seemed that uh, it changed your career instantly. That one day you were playing at a small club and the next day you are seeing David Bowie in front of you playing your song. Is, is, it, is that a true, uh, true idea? That's actually kind of interesting. I would say that, I mean, when Funeral came out, we'd done one, one tour opening up for this band called The Unicorns. And, uh, and it was a really fun tour and people were really into it. But then, then as soon as Funeral came out, I mean, we still were touring rock clubs. Like it was, it was pretty small, but the shows were, I mean, we got lots of good press and the shows, I mean, and stuff sort of spread on the internet. Like people were talking about it. And, uh, you know, I think that first tour, all the shows were sold out, you know, it was kind of like amazing, but we still, it was still pretty like, I mean, we did like, you know, like a rock club tour and then another rock club tour and then slightly you know theaters and sort of moved up and then by the end of that tour like the last show on that tour was opening up for you too so it was it was definitely like a like you know yeah it was kind of a yeah it was an intense year but it was fun where are the unicorns now they they broke up nick from the unicorns is now and has a band called the islands and uh, alden's doing a project called hidden words and uh jamie's Jimmy's playing with everybody, yeah, he's playing around a lot. He's been playing with a little Scream, actually, but, yeah. They are, they are also part of the Montreal scene, or... Because I wanted to ask you about the, about the city, about how, how much Montreal is, is, is important for your music and for your work. Um, it's a great city. I mean, I, I'm, I moved there partly with that in mind, but I mean, like... It's interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a really good place to live, and, and particularly then, I don't even know as much now, but I think there's there's still lots of good bands around. Yeah, there's like, always good bands. Yeah. It's just it's a like, great, it's, it, it, especially in Canada, it's it's a great, there's a great cultural community there of music and visual art and dance and whatever, and uh, it's a really nurturing community, and there's lots of different communities to fall into, and they all overlap a little bit. And, and it's just always been a great place for us to to be a band. So it's really supportive of artists. And it's still one of the cheaper cities to live in, which makes a huge difference when you first move to a city. Like, um, if you want to make music, for sure. Yeah, like when I moved there, and I think it's still going. It still happens quite a bit. But there were like you know like lots of students and stuff. So there'd be lots of like you know shows in in like loft spaces or like you know things would just kind of pop up and there'd be shows there. And. Uh, Still, yeah, and it was pretty. There's still, lots of that. Yeah, I mean, we're older and we're not as home at home. We're not home as much. As much, but when I go home, there's you know, there's still a million great bands, and I feel like I see like a new Montreal band every couple months. That's actually really exciting, and there's new communities of 19 year olds that are doing really cool stuff, and it's pretty awesome. It's pretty great. Still, we're just older. It's just weirder for me to go to a show. At a loft where people are smoking. Yeah, and everyone's like, "Who's the old guy at the back?" Yeah, who's that fat old guy at the back? <laughs> <laughs> uh, one last question for you guys. Uh, um, I always wondered how how do you after that big great high of highlight of a day when when you when you perform in front of the enthusiastic crowd and you feel ev- elevated and 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 huge. How how do you get? down afterwards what do you do after the show is it some old rock star routine or you just go to sleep or I think mountains of blow yeah <laughs> no, I mean trying. to be honest the 70s again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah right I mean we're a pretty <coughs> healthy boring bunch I mean to be honest and it sounds you know it sounds really cheesy but at the end of the day, we're kind of just like a big social club. Like we're all really good friends, and so I mean, after a show, we just kind of hang out. <laughs> like we have a ping pong table, and we have a glass of wine, and watch a movie, and it's like pretty. It's pretty chill. It's kind of just a normal, normal. Yeah, it's not that exciting. <laughs> it's like a home away from home. Huh? Yeah, I, I mean, mean you, you try to make it to... like that because I, I don't think you yeah. know. I think if we were like 20 and doing this, then it would be more about partying and stuff, but none of us are like, yeah, we're all pretty mellow at this point, you know? I mean, like, I mean, not to say we never have fun or anything, but it's just like, it's not, it's not a constant party, that's for sure. I think, well, especially because we all, I mean, it's the, doing this is so important to all of us that even six years, seven years ago, whenever, it's knowing that you want to do this 
when you're 35, 40, 45 years old, like you don't want to blow out early and feel like dying, you know what I mean? Like, so it's really important to us to just really enjoy it and not to take any of it for granted, but also like live healthy and take care of your body and all that kind of, like it's cheesy, but it's, that is really important because we actually want to keep doing this for a long time. So at the end of a, a really great day, we just kind of like soak it in and enjoy it for what it is, you know what I mean? Like the party afterwards is not the exciting thing. The, yeah. the show is actually the exciting thing. Thanks a lot. Have a great show tonight. Thank you.